Welcome to Virtual Assistance, the agency growth machine podcast. Take your digital marketing agency to the next level as we share secrets, strategies, and client success stories. Step back from the day-to-day of your agency and activate massive growth using virtual assistants. And now your host, Azar Siddiqui. Welcome to another podcast, folks. Uh, my amazing guest today, Mr. Uh, Jason Lockhart. And I just found out that Jason used to be a college professor uh, back in the day before his uh, digital marketing agency days. And we're going to have a great conversation uh, with Jason on how he started out, where he started out, how he ended up uh, with uh, Kitchen and Bath uh, Marketing Solutions, what the journey has been, and who's the person uh, behind this, uh, this amazing digital marketing agency uh, that uh, Jason has created, and what are the things uh, that set him apart and gave him the experiences that kind of led to uh, uh, this amazing marketing agency and the successful uh, marketing agency. So, uh, Jason, uh, welcome. Thanks for doing this. I really, really appreciate it, sir. Oh, thanks for having me out there. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm in uh, Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, you know, the, the, the journey I've been on over the last one year, it's been uh, very incredible. And, uh, you know, uh, supposedly I'm living out of my suitcase for the last one year. Uh, but, uh, but the amazing thing is that, that this building, that this business that I'm part of, uh, RepStack, is just blowing up. And, uh, you know, uh, it hasn't given me a lot of uh, time to focus on, uh, uh, you know, uh, where, where I'm going to live next and things like that. But the cool thing is that everything is up for grabs right now. And, uh, you know, it feels like that the world is my oyster, but I am in Pakistan these days and uh, uh, most of our VAs that we place as well, they're all in Pakistan as well. And they all work at night because uh, 99% of our clients are uh, uh, US and Canadian clients. And uh, so, so I'm kind of having to lead by example here as well. And I'm working nights as well. So my work day starts at 5 p.m. It ends at 1 a.m. And, uh, you know, was, and I've been doing it this for the last nine months now and uh, really looking forward to getting back to uh, stateside and getting back to my uh, normal day routine. But uh, as of right now, I'm passing it off as uh, leading by example and uh, being in the trenches with my team and doing it myself as well. How about you? How are things going on your side? OK, so I mean, great bye. Texas, which is about 20 minutes north of Dallas. Most, most people have no idea where Grapevine is. What I tell them is if you've ever flown in, into the DFW airport, you were in Grapevine because that's actually in Grapevine, Texas. So just a little on me, uh, I got into all this. So my background is actually in architecture. So okay. I'm a trained architect, went to Southern University, which is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Then I got a graduate degree in urban planning at The Ohio State University. So I'm a Buckeye. And I would say right after that, uh, with, right after graduate school, uh, went home, because home for me is Los Angeles. So I had moved home for a little while, worked there for a while. And one of the, one of the professors I had at Southern University, he became uh, you know, the dean of the School of Architecture at Southern University and asked me to uh, help him and head, head up there and teach, which which was interesting. That's a whole nother conversation we can have <laughs> another time why he asked me, because I was not his favorite student, but that's a, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation why I was not. But uh, so, and and I'll just say, uh, when, when I walked across the stage and he shook my hand, he said, I was a pain in the A to him. So I, I just say, that. and so when he called me to ask him to work, I mean, ask me to work with him, I was saying, like, aren't I the same student that you said I was a pain in your A? Like, why would you want me to work with you? He's like, because I know you're going to be a pain in the A to the students. So, so yeah. uh, moved back to Baton Rouge, taught at Southern University for about, for about eight to 10 years. Oh, and wow. Then, um, while I was there, some of my classmates who I had graduated with, they were in the Dallas area and they were ready to move out on their own. So it was like, well, look, let's uh, begin our own firm. And 
we all opened it up, but I was in Louisiana at the time still teaching. And then I moved over to Louisiana State University, LSU, and I taught over there in the School of Architecture, in the School of Interior Design, while I also had the firm. But on the architecture side, we do a lot of commercial design and school design. And since my emphasis is on urban planning, I do a lot of university master planning because that's where I have a lot of my connections. So how I ended up on the marketing side, so when I was at LSU, one of the one of the professors there said, why don't we do like a marketing class, you know, like some type of marketing class. And nobody really knew digital marketing like that. And what, what ended up happening is that some of the professors said, why don't we let that young buck take the class? And, and I got the name young buck because I was the youngest hire and also <laughs> Ohio State Buckeyes. That, that's why I went to graduate, so I was a young buck. So they was like, why don't we let that young buck have the class? So I end up, so I have found out about this in April and we were supposed to have the class in August and I didn't know a whole lot about digital marketing at the time. So I told the Dean, for me to take this class, you have to send me to every website design, social media, SEO conference that is happening between now and time school starts. So. In between April nice. and August, I had a graduate school education in digital marketing. I mean, I, it was like drinking water from a fire hose. It was so much information. I mean, but I knew I had to be ahead of the students. So, I mean, for that four months, I was traveling all over the U.S., Florida, uh, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, California, for all these conferences on, like I said, web design. Oh, what year was this, Gitchin? What year was this? This was in 2000 and 2012. This is in 2012. Okay. So about uh, nine years, uh, nine years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and I, I mean, it was, it was so, you talk about social media world, their conference, you talk about the SEO conferences, all, I mean, web design, all type of conferences that were happening in between August, in between April and August, that's where I was at. I was at every conference and it was like I said, a graduate school education. So once I learned all that, had the class. So, so I actually taught the class. And so I started, and then I started to implement the same tactics on our architecture firm in the Dallas area. Okay. So started to do a lot of SEO and all. And so we actually work with a lot of interior designers. And so one of the interior designers around, around 2012, 2013 asked us, I've been hearing about this SEO thing. Like, I mean, what is this SEO thing? That uh, can you help me with that? Because I've been seeing you more online now. So I said, sure, we'll we'll be happy to help you out. So we helped her out. Six months later, she had some success, and then one of one of her colleagues reached out to her and said, "What are you doing?" Because I'm starting to see you online more. She said, "Well, Jason is helping me out." She's like, "Isn't he an architect?" She's like, "Yeah, but well, he he does the marketing for his firm." So. So we helped her out about six months later, started to have some success. And so after that, we started to get referrals. And so that was the start of the digital marketing. It would, uh, that was around 2013, 2014. So, so when you, so sorry to cut you off there, Jason. Sure. So when you said that you and your buddies uh, were starting an uh, agency, so that was really the architectural agency that you guys first started out. And that was uh, back in uh, when again? That was in 2007, 2008, right around when we had the housing okay. debacle here within the U.S. Yeah, right yeah. So, so you, so you, 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 you kind of have the experience in launching businesses uh, early on. So you've been doing that since uh, 2007, and and then the journey kind of crisscrosses between your teaching and. Uh, and then going into a little bit of digital marketing and then references start coming in and then very exciting. So yeah. that's great. Sorry. So, so go ahead. So what happened next? No. So, so what, once we had opened up the firm around 2013, 14, it was actually a general marketing agency because we were helping a lot of home services. So we were helping gotcha. roofers. We were helping contractors. We were helping flooring people, landscapers in our area. And so we really got to an area where we plateaued. So we, we, no matter what we did, it was just hard for us to grow. 
on on the marketing side, not on the architecture side. This is just on the marketing mm -hmm. side. So we had plateaued on the marketing side. So around 2019, uh, we actually had, uh, I actually had a talk and this happens at the end of every year. I actually talked to my, I actually talked to my partners on the architecture side to see what can, what, what has happened over the year? What, what do we need to enhance? What do we need to do different? So we actually had a talk and then we said, we haven't had an economic downturn in a while and we need to prepare for that. So we need to do some investments because we actually, uh, we, we began the architecture, like I said, in 2008, right around the housing debacle. And this is now 2019. So they're in between that time, the, uh, the economy has been flowing. And we knew eventually something would happen. Now we didn't know the coronavirus was gonna happen, but we knew just by, by you know, just by how, 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 the, how the economy works, we knew something would happen. And so we said, well, we need to have an investment in something else. And so I said, well, look, we have this marketing agency and that, that, that we haven't really put a whole lot of time in. And we've just been over 90% of our clients were all referral based, all referrals. So we didn't do, so ironically enough, we didn't do any marketing for the marketing agency. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, that's, uh, that's true for a lot of agency owners I know. So... So we said, okay, so we need to actually invest in this. So the architecture firm gave the marketing firm a loan to actually help it out. And so I started to look at some coaches because I'm like, okay, well, we plateaued. So we need to really learn how to take this uh, to the next level. So that's how we found Josh Nelson, you know, and, and the seven figure agency through, you know, that research. So we had joined that right around the end of February, 2020. So one of the first things we had talked to, so when we had signed on with Jeff, I mean, uh, with um, so Jeff was our, uh, he was our account manager. And, yeah. and uh, Josh said, you know, Jeff is gonna help you out. And so we had talked to Jeff and one of the things that uh, Josh really, and the whole, a whole program really emphasizes is to niche really, Focus on your niche so you can scale. Mm -hmm. And so since we were a general mar marketing agency, we were a little hesitant because we were like, oh, well, we've been doing all right uh, mm -hmm. and having all. But then Jeff came, he was like, but you want to scale. So we need to hit you down. So we were looking at, you know, a few different niches and we were torn between, you know, roofing and actually, you know, uh, remodeling, kitchen and bath remodeling. We actually had more roofing clients at the time than we had remodeling clients. And so we were going to err on the side of roofing. That's where we, where we were going to go. But Jeff asked me a question. He was like, uh, if you were, because one of the things you're going to have to, uh, you know, do trade shows and speak and all, he's like, would you feel comfortable speaking if, in front of this crowd? Would you feel comfortable being around this crowd? And when I thought about it, I'm like, roofers really not my cup of tea. I like roofers and we have a lot of clients, but that's not my cup of tea. Honestly, designers are because that's what my background is in. So mm -hmm. he was like, well, go where you love it. Cause he's like 10, 15 years from now, what do you want to what do you, what do you want to be known as? So obviously mm -hmm. we had went the remodeling uh realm. So we rebranded everything, got a new website, did this in about two weeks. So around mid-March, we were ready to go, ready to launch. Nice. But you know, the whole world changed in March 2020. <laughs> yeah. Whole world changed. So that's when the coronavirus yeah. hit. And we yeah. was like, oh, wow. <laughs> now, what, what have we done? We just got into, and so what ended up happening is that I said, well, we're going to have to change some things here. Right, because uh, we're I'm not gonna be able to market to these remodeling clients about marketing because they're gonna look at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> like, do you <laughs> not know what's happening in the economy now? Do I mean, yeah. do we really need to spend more money on marketing? So, what ended up happening is we created a COVID 19 resource guide. It was an eight page guide where it had information on how to get all the PPP loans, how to get all the SBA loans. It had, a, it had an area in on, on how to market in the industry now, how to work from home. Because remember in 2020, March, 2020, a lot of small businesses did not know how to work from home because yeah. they didn't have to. 
So how yeah. to work from home, how to market in this environment. So it was a lot of good resources. And we started to hand this out on LinkedIn. So what ended up happening, uh, a lot of business owners reached out to us and said, this is some good information. What else do you have that, that can really help us out? I said, well, we're working on that. Let me get back to you. When I would hang up the phone, I had, I had talked to the team like, uh, we don't have nothing. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? So what ended up happening, I actually asked some people on the team, like, what, what are some ideas that we can do? And I was hearing some ideas. Nothing really caught my attention. So I said, well, look, since we had business owners reaching out to us, why don't we reach out to them and ask them what they want? So in between uh, late March and June, we did a listening tour. So we spoke to over 400 business owners in, in the remodeling architecture and the interior design space just to hear from them. To, to nice. hear from you to say what is happening in your area, what are the issues that you're that that you're going through in in your market, and what are the gaps that you so was see this face to face or over over the phone? This was uh, honestly how we are now through Zoom. Most of them were Zoom. Uh, right. It was in between Zoom and phone call, but I would I was actually preferring Zoom to see them face to face. Yeah. So we spoke to over. 400 business owners in every state except South Dakota. Now, don't ask me why. We spoke to every state except we spoke to people in Hawaii, Alaska. We, we spoke to people in actually in Puerto Rico, which is a territory, <laughs> but not anybody in South Dakota. I don't know why. So if there's anybody listening and we haven't spoken to you and you're in South Dakota, reach out because we want to hear from you too. So... <laughs> So we had spoke to all these people and learned a lot of information. So from that, we developed a resource library, which we have on our website now. That's the most visited aspect of our site, where we have free information. Uh, we have, um, we have, we have uh, videos, training videos up there. We have CEUs because we're one of the CEU providers for the Natural Kitchen and Bath Association. Uh, we have uh, articles, blogs, uh, just a whole lot. It's over 200 pages of information is, is in our resource library. And we add to that every month. So mm -hmm. when I went back to my architecture partners that invested in the, market, in the marketing side, I said, well, look, I'm going to need about a year <laughs> before we even start really looking at actually starting to pay back the loan and and because I'm going to spend the next year really building up the brand. And two of my partners, so I, had, so, so I have three partners, two of my partners looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you, like, we just in Pennsylvania, you need a year. I said, yeah, I need a year. And then yeah. one of my partners, he's always behind me. He's like, yeah, we, we trust you, Jason. Go, go do what you need to do. <laughs> so over the year, what, what I did Wrote a book. So this, is, this is all across 2020 then. This is all across 2020, heading also into 2021. Cause I because I didn't know how long this was gonna last, and we're still in it, honestly. But yeah. I knew yeah. a year from now, hopefully we'll be in a better position than we are now. I mean, at at you know, this was around May. This was around May of 2020 when, when I had this conversation with, with the partner. So in between that time, what I really started to focus on was building up my brain. So uh, one of the things that Josh Nelson talks about is getting published. And so we had, we, we had published our book. Uh, it's, it's you, you know, here on marketing is, you know, uh, the complete guide uh, to internet marketing for the kitchen and bath industry. Nice. So what that ended up doing, what that did is that got me into speaking engagements locally. So we had joined the National Kitchen and Bath Association. We started to speak locally to uh, uh, all of the members here about marketing. And so what ended up happening, we started having a Tuesday's talk with Jason. And so every other Tuesday, I would talk about marketing, whether it be social media, Facebook, Instagram, whether it be SEO, whether it be web design, video marketing, all of that. Hmm. So over about an eight-week time span, we had these talks. And around towards the end, the president of the local National Kitchen and Bath here, uh, the NKBA said, 
you're doing an excellent job, but there are some sessions where we don't have a lot of uh, members that are actually in your talks and you're giving out a lot of good information that they're not hearing and you're wasting it here on our local area. We need to put you in touch with National. So uh, reached out to National, they reached out to me and said, we've been seeing what you're doing because I actually had all these videos were on our website and also on YouTube. So they said, we, we've seen, you know, a lot of the videos and the training that you're doing. Why don't you do this at the national level? And so they offered us to do CEU trainings at the national level. So around January, January, February of this year, we became national CEU providers for the National Kitchen and Bath at the national level. And that really started to get our name out there. And so we really started to become known in the industry as value providers, because one thing that I say is that whether you work with us or not, we have information that can help you grow your business now. And so, so we are a resource library. So during this time when you're building out the brand, Jason, are you still adding up new clients? Uh, is, is the client... Uh, client uh, client uh, stuff coming into you guys already right now, or does that just snowball in 2021? Really, it 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 the the focus in 2020 was the brand. Actually, it started to snowball, you know, in 2021 once we uh, became like national CEU providers and our name really started to get out there. Now we're starting to have more in-power calls to hear what we're doing. You know, a lot of people reached out to us because they saw. Some of our CEU sessions are we are there saw where we are partners because also I became licensed. I became I'm one of one of the few uh, sales and marketing specialists for the National Kitchen and Path Association. So that's an exam that you have to take. So I'm I'm one of there's only about ten of us. There's only about ten marketing agencies in all of US that have this have this designation. So that also nice. sets me apart is that we have the designation that we are sales and marketing specialists for the NKBA. We're industry partners and we're also CEU providers. So when anybody looks at us and say, okay, well, what actually differentiates you? A, we are in this industry and we're, we, we have the backing of the national organization. We know this industry because I'm an architect by trade and we work with a lot of, you know, interior designers. So it's hard for anyone to say we don't know what we're doing because we know the industry and we know marketing and we use the both of those to help out our clients. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Wow. Well, what, what a journey. And for, for, from the looks of it is that you focused on really building out the groundwork because a lot of people would... Uh, you know, want to move fast and things like that. And, you know, just get to those uh, uh, first few clients and things like that. But uh, I think your journey is a little different where you're focusing on building out the brand, doing the things right, becoming the part of organizations that you guys really need to be a part of. And, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing part of the reason for that is because you are, you, you're, you, you, your current, uh, sorry, your, uh, uh, agency, your architectural business, that's also currently uh, working or it was right. working at the so, same time? Right. So what what I would say our journey is not the typical journey yeah. because we actually had, like I said, our architecture firm loaned our marketing firm money. So we actually had mm -hmm. money and most of my money that I was making at the time was on the architecture side. So I was not in a rush to have mm -hmm. to earn money where a lot of marketing agencies, that's how they live. That's how they eat. I mean, so they yeah. have to get clients now. So I yeah. didn't have that. I didn't have that urgency where I can actually spend time to build out the brand and really be known as the value prop uh, providers. Because what I had told my team, I said three years from now, when any of the architects, the interior designers or home remodelers, when they think about value, we are one of the first names out of their mouth because of all the value we're putting out in the marketplace because of our resource library. We do monthly webinars. We, we speak at, at the national level, at the conferences. Uh, and so uh, I want us to be known as the value providers mm -hmm. that, that can help you grow, whether you work with us or not. And that I knew that that's going to take time. That, that doesn't happen overnight. That doesn't happen. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So my, my next question is for anyone who's watching and they're, they're trying to build out their digital marketing agency, what's your one advice that you want to give to someone who wants to grow their digital marketing agency over the next uh, six to 12 months? I would say whatever your niche is, network, network. I mean, what, what, what you do now, network, because you never know, because we received a lot of referrals from uh, remodeling agencies that have never worked with us. They have, I mean, they haven't ever, they, they haven't worked with us, but they've used our resource library or they networked with us and they know, and they know us because you mm -hmm. have to have them know, like, and trust you. Once they know, like, and trust you, now they can feel comfortable referring you other people. And so we've had uh, remodeling companies refer us because they know, like, and trust us. And even though they didn't use us, they said, well, I know they'll be able to help you. And so we've got referrals that way. So I would say, Whatever niche or whatever area that you're that your main focus in, network with the industries locally. Mm -hmm. So whether that's like the roofing, find out what the roofing organization is and network locally. And yeah. if you get enough local, then that's going to help you regionally and nationally. But make sure that you network because when I say your net worth is in your network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that. That word's been thrown around for so long that network, 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 mm -hmm. but just coming, coming out of your mouth and listening to you, it's so simple that, you know, the, the journey that you've kind of uh, described uh, from being a professor uh, to launching your architectural firm to uh, launching your digital marketing agency. Uh, one thing's been common there where, you know, you're building this brand by being part of these organizations and speaking and providing value uh, to these people and uh, not really asking anything in return. And it uh, looks like that just happens organically. Uh, when you get to that point, people just start coming to you pre-positioned to buy. And, and that, that's the saying, I, I forgot which of the, the well-known Speakers out there said that said this, but they said if you help enough people achieve their dreams or reach their goals, you're going to reach yours. And so yep. that, that's what we're all about with the value. We're helping people, like I said, whether they work with us or not, help them reach that next level. In turn, it's go it's go head back to you and drugs. Amazing, amazing, Jason. Uh, so impressive, uh, so, such an impressive journey. Um, I'd love to hear more, but uh, but I kind of want to switch gears. And I want to talk to you about uh, how is your marketing agency set up? What's what's the organizational chart, or well, you know, what, what are your responsibilities, and what does your uh, team look like right now? Okay, so uh, really, it I'm I'm the main figurehead, so I'm the ones that's always out there doing most of the business development, and that's one of the reasons I had uh, with with RepStat is because I needed to have some I need to have a marketing assistant. And so most of the most of the people on our team are working in the operations to get the work done. Mm -hmm. But I really didn't have anybody helping me on the marketing side to really get help to get our name out there and to help with the business development side. So that's when I have re originally reached out to you. I, I believe that was like May of this year, May or June of this year. I believe it was. I yeah, believe. yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's when I had, that, that's when I originally reached out to you was just to have help on that side. And uh, you did an amazing job because we have Rump Shot that helps, uh, I mean, it helps us out tremendously. So she handles all of our social media. She handles, so uh, I had told her when, when, so I had dropped the ball the first week and a half, two weeks, because I didn't really know what I needed her to do. Cause I was so used to doing everything that yeah. I didn't have a plan for her. And so for the first week or two, I don't know if she was twiddling her thumbs or not. I don't know. But I, I didn't really have a plan of action for her to do. I, I had told her some of the things that, you know, seven figure agency suggested, but it really, all of that really didn't apply. And so when I really went back and, and said, okay, this is where I need her and laid out a plan that we talked, now she's rolling. She knows everything she has to do. She helps us out because we, we do a podcast now. And, and once we do the podcast, she helps to edit that, get it out to all of the channels, helps to market that. 
Uh, she handles the email newsletter. She handles the social media. She handles the blogging. I'm like everything on the marketing side to help out. She does. And so I could just focus on business development. And then my <clears throat> next hire will be, uh, which you all will, will be a sales rep. Cause that, that's, that's the next one I'm leading into. Cause we're starting to get more and more, uh, resume. Uh, we're, we're starting to get more and more appointments to, to hear from us. And, and my nice. time is not, I'm, I'm not able to hop on every call as, as much as I can. So that's going to be our next hire will be a sales rep. Excellent. And then what about uh, uh, client management or account management? Uh, who's taking care of that? Is that on the operation side or are you still uh, taking care of that stuff too? No. So that, that's on the operations side. So we have a whole team over there that handles all of that. That that's why I said the operations side, that that, that was all taken care of. It was more on, nice. on, on the marketing side. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Excellent. Uh, so looks like uh, and how many people in your total team right now? Uh, and uh, is it is it all local or are most no, of them on uh, remote? It's 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 all spread out. Uh, we we have roughly about 20. And nice. it's all spread out, all spread out. Is it all US based or I know Ramsha is based out of uh, Pakistan, but uh, do you have any more outside of the US as well? Or how, uh, how is we that? Have, we, have, we have one content manager. Well, we have one content manager that's in uh, Europe and that's in London. And then uh, I'm thinking, I think it, mostly everybody else is in the U.S. Yeah, mostly everybody else is in the U.S. Excellent. And um, what, what, what does a typical day in your life uh, look like, uh, Jason? How do you start your day? Where, where do you spend most of your time? I know you're spending a lot of time on business development too right now, but, uh, but just walk us uh, through your day because, uh, you know, like uh, I, I'd like to think that, you know, a lot of agency owners are uh, listening to this. And, uh, you know, we all have different journeys just like you. And, but, you know, the amount of learnings we do from uh, just listening to uh, other people who are doing, uh, knocking it out of the park, uh, so to speak, like you are, uh, you know, just that one point in, you know, during my day uh, could help me uh, optimize my day a little bit better and, you know, get to that uh, uh, seven figure uh, agency that as an agency owner, I'm trying to build out a little bit faster. So if you don't mind just walking us through your uh, day and how you spend your time uh, inside your agency. So my day typically uh, begins once I drop the kids off, because I drop the kids off at school every morning, then I come home and work out. Once I work out, my day roughly starts around nine o'clock and then I may listen to, you know, like a clubhouse call. So clubhouse is one of the new apps that are out now. And that that's how I, I do a lot of networking also. So there's a couple nice. there's a couple clubs that I'm in on the architecture and the design side. And then a lot of times I'm either asked to speak. And so how, how I've met a lot of people is this, I've just gone into the club and spoke on stage just to get my name out there. And then they ask me to speak more. And so that's what that, uh, so that's what, you know, usually in the mornings is uh, hopping, on, hopping on Clubhouse just to see what's happening there. Uh, do some type of business development where I'm reaching out to prospects, uh, seeing what Rumshy is working on for the day, uh, doing in terms of Networking, most of my time uh, throughout the day, besides the morning, like I said, between 9 and 11 is really business development, focusing on, like I said, listening to the Clubhouse, seeing what's happening there, reaching out to prospects, seeing how we can move the business forward, and then networking <clears throat> uh, beyond that. And I would say around 3 o'clock, that's when I go pick my kids up from school, do homework with them for about an hour, and then I answer and then from about four to five answer emails, uh, see, see what's happening, see, look at what happened uh, throughout the day in terms of, you know, rub shine the marketing stuff, uh, see what we have to do in terms either of the podcasts or anything like that. So that's my nice. Pretty, pretty loaded day uh, uh, from uh, early in the morning all the way uh, into the evening uh, and a lot of uh, business development activity. One question that I'd like to ask is, uh, uh, 
tell me your uh, uh, you know most uh, maybe uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is the right word but uh, an embarrassing say uh, sales story I, i've had that trust me like you know try trying to get uh, uh, in the in the groove and things like that and you coming from uh, being a professor into an architect and things like that uh, you know, just kind of want to get an idea about, uh, uh, you know, how that journey was like early on uh, when you were just starting to sell. And I think you're, you're still doing a lot of selling yourself right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, what, what happened early on in the selling days where you're, you know, you're trying to close those first few deals and uh, maybe it didn't go so well? I would say I have a lot of them, actually. I I forgot people's names. Uh, that, that's that. That's always embarrassing to people. <laughs> I forget somebody's name or call them something else halfway through. Say their name <laughs> halfway through. Say the wrong name. So I've done that. Uh, I would say the first big contract we received, being surprised that they said yes. <laughs> like like when when I was like, so are you? Uh, so after I went through the whole spiel, saying, okay, you ready? You're like, yeah. What I sound like? Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that that was embarrassing because from the opposite side, it's like you're not taking my business. Like, uh, oh yeah, we are. I've got this. <laughs> so yeah, that's that, so funny that, because that, I, that I can so relate to that because uh -huh. early on we're we're so used to getting that no that uh, you know you're just going through the process and motions and uh, you're probably not expecting a deal out of this thing anymore. And I think right now we're at a different position where, you know, all these customers are coming to us and they're pre-positioned to buy. I'm sure your closing ratios are way higher than uh, they were earlier on, but that's very natural. I, I think that's happened to me uh, early on. I just didn't even think that I'm going to close my, I don't know when the first deal is going to come through. Yep. And then when you get that first, yes, you're like, wow, yep. <laughs> are you, are you then, sure you want to go with me? And that was because of, you know, a talk I had with Jeff when he had looked over the service offerings and he was saying, like, you're not charging enough. And mm. I was I was having that. I was having a mindset like, mm, should I charge more? Once we sold that first one, it's like, oh, really? You're going to take that? OK, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. By the way, Jeff, uh, Je I think uh, you're talking about Jeff Fisher. Yes. Uh, Jeff Fisher is uh, part of RepStack uh, now, and uh, he's been uh, with us for the last uh, seven or eight months now. And uh, it's been a great journey with him because it's like having our own personal coach inside our organization and mm -hmm. anything. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a great blessing to have, have him over as well. He's amazing. Uh, is, is, is he still in this couch? <laughs> he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Jeff I said hi, and, and you, you, I will. you know we need to get him a new couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I really appreciate your time, Jason. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, we're gonna have this obviously syndicated and published. Uh, uh, I'll have my team member reach out to any special links that you want to share. Obviously, your website, maybe a link to your book or anything like that. And uh, we'll have all of those things uh, published uh, when we get this thing up and running for you. And uh, we'll also send you the raw, file, raw files in case uh, you want to use any uh, part of this interview as well. But uh, it's been such a uh, blessing uh, uh, listening to your journey. Uh, I hope uh, you all the success. And uh, I wish that we continue to have these conversations from time to time. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And love working with your team, by the way. Love working with your team. Thanks a lot, Jason. I really appreciate it. You have a wonderful rest of the day, sir. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. This has been the Virtual Assistant, the agency growth machine podcast by Azar Siddiqui, co-founder at RepStack. If you liked today's episode, you can find more and subscribe at repstack.co. Thank you for listening.